Hi, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. Did you miss me? Today's video is going to be a collaboration with two amazing women. The Crafting Nook, which is Miss Felicia, and also Lisa from Lisa Wire Art. If you haven't already, pop over, show them some love and say hello from me. If you click the description, all products used will be in there. So have a little look if something interests you. So stick with me. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Lots of twists and turns. I saved a fail. But in the meantime, if you want to have exclusive access to behind the scenes material or up and coming videos, consider becoming a member. Now, I'd like to take this time to shout out to all my current members. Thank you for taking the leap of faith. You are all helping me share content. And to people who subscribe to my channel and show support, thank you also. Now, Lisa, Lisa, I mix both your names together. Now, Lisa and Felicia, I hope that you enjoy this and I hope that you think it fits the brief of our collaboration. Um, as I said, there's going to be lots of twists and turns. On this first layer, what you are seeing me doing is slowly adding my colours in a controlled way where my resin is starting to cure to a gold spray painted board. And I really, really enjoyed where this look was going. So the principle was fine. And in this layer, I think it executed well. But you'll get to see my real life challenges with the resin gods today. If you haven't already, remember to give me a thumbs up. Also consider liking and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. If you already subscribed, remember to hit that notification bell because my bell seems to have broken. You might need to unselect and reselect to get notifications of up and coming videos. So the principle with this is I started with my deeper colour, which was the deep ocean colour blue. I then came around and added the light blue, which was from Resonate, and the open water blue was from Just For You Online. I then come around and add my turquoise, and then gold, and a little bit of bronze. And there is a little bit of the sparkle within the resin. It was a very slow process. I've edited a lot of this out just to save time for you, and a lot of it was repetition, but I think you get the idea of the speed, and the detail that it took to get to this layer. I had to watch my teeth didn't fall out. I, I seem to be really struggling today to get my words out and they make sense. But let me talk you through some of the parts of the journey. So the idea with the gold background was if bits of it show through, I'm hoping that it's going to add depth. Now, in theory, I thought I'd add this layer and then maybe a second layer and put my dots somewhere else and then a final layer where my dots are slightly somewhere else again so hopefully you can see through to the layers and it will make this peacock look like he's shaking his tail feather that was the principle and yeah it, it kind of didn't go that way <laughs> so prepare as I said it's going to be a bumpy ride I love adding the gold when it comes to the turquoise, but the resin does go over the top of it. So you, you kind of get this greenier colour in your turquoise, turquoise, turquoise. <laughs> uh, and I lost some of that vibrancy. Now I came back around with the copper because I just wanted there to be a little bit of a darker contrast between the gold and copper. Now, if I had a magic stop button at the time, now, I'd probably stop when I just apply my gold and, and leave it at that. And maybe I could have done something else with the bronze because the bronze took over the gold, the gold took over the turquoise and you lost some of that vibrancy in colours. Anyway, I'm showing I'm digressing. These were not meant to be um, photorealistic obviously peacock feathers, they were meant to be abstract, a little bit of fun and I wanted to create a sense that that tail feather is shaking. So I'm going to add some music, I was going to say water, I'm not adding water, I'm going to add some music now while you watch some process. I come in after this has dried 
and then I apply some clear and I uh, give a little swirl through of the bronze to again make my tail feathers look like they're shaking and at that stage I was really happy and then we get to the second layer and it's all down here from there so Felicia this is at the point where I was like I've just ruined my piece anyway let me put some of Sharon's dodgy FM on for you and I'll be back shortly So my second layer of resin that you saw me very quickly do was to try and add a flat surface because where I did my blobs of resin and then I came in and had my copper after it had all dried, it then might meant my surfaces were uneven. So this is where it all goes horribly wrong and I apologise for the state of what you're going to find. So why did it go wrong? I tried to do this before I went to work so it was very poor time constraints so I had to work quick which meant I did not wait until my resin was starting to cure which meant I did not apply it in a controlled manner with my stick and I'm pouring it on so basically I end up with far too much resin that continued to spread that covered up too much of my back area and also then started to run off so it wasn't too bad to start with when I first put my dark blue blobs on and then yeah it just it just went and this is where I'm thinking oh no I'm gonna have to ask for an extension for the project because I have lost control I contemplated starting a whole new project again I was too committed so I had to stick with it uh, I used the same colors as the first time but you can see I mean look at the size of that Anyway, hindsight is an amazing thing. I did learn a lot along the way and I would definitely go back and do some things differently. I think the concept is really well and I will go back and revisit it, but the execution of myself, not the ex execution, execution, how I applied it and my timings was incorrect. So please learn from my mistake. Make sure when you're going to work on a project this big that you've got time, you take your time and you make sure your resin is curing before you do it so you can have better control anyway that's Sharon's hot tip um you'll come back and you'll see the disaster is it uh, after it's cured and it, it keeps slipping off the canvas and then I contemplate well let's continue and let's see if I can salvage it so that's what you're going to see you're going to see another layer of resin where I tried to correct myself and this time I had a little bit more time and I applied the same principles as layer one and I think all three values do add to it. 
but I'll let you tell me what you think. Anyway, let's put Sharon's dodgy FM on and you watch me create. But before I do, you might be thinking, Sharon, what's going on with your arms? You look like a ghost woman. Well, that is calamine lotion I put on my arms to put a, to give me a protective barrier should I dribble resin on my skin. Um, so no, I'm not a ghost. No, I don't think it's a fashion statement, but I do want to protect my arms from any resin drips. Now that's cleared up, back to Dodgy FM. So this is actually layer six I am working on because layer five, if that's right, if I've got this right, I did another clear layer after I did my dodgy layer. <laughs> that was to, again to give me a smooth uh, surface to work on. Now I apologise firstly for my workstation. I decided rather than keep changing the piece of paper after each one, I'm just going to leave the one from the prior day. Apologies. Secondly, I apologise for the mess of that other one. I mean, it was hideous. There's no way around it. But I wanted to come back in because I figured that if I took my time again and apply my dots like I did the first time, when it was going off slowly, I might still be able to make it pretty again because you can still see a little bit of the original one and you can see the second one, but I've managed to cover up most of the dodginess. <laughs> Are you still with me? Now you can see me wiping off, wiping off, wiping off dust because what I needed to do now was scratch my resin surface before I started to paint in the detail with acrylic and peacock because when I apply my final top coat of resin, it's going to need something to stick to. And previously I've worked on my artwork and then think, oh dear, I need to now sand it and you risk ruining your piece. So anyway, that's another Sharon's hot tip. Now what I'm currently doing is trying to brighten up my feathers. But if you look at the top right, you can see where there's a few dimples where the resin run off. But I wasn't too faced because I knew I was going to give it another top coat. So ignore that little mess there. I'm basically going with a dark and medium and a light blue. And then the light blue is also going to be the little bits I put in the middle. What I wanted to do was try and make that middle part almost look like they pop like the little circles now you don't have to do this i'm not saying that this is what peacock feathers looks like by any means i wanted to put some character in there i wanted to try and brighten up the back area as well because for some reason it it just seemed to dry dark and it didn't have the pop so i'm figuring this out as i go and i was mindful that the feathers to the right feathers to the left i needed to put my highlights in different areas and I wanted them specifically around the bottom, the top and a little bit at the side and a couple of little specks in the middle to almost make them look like they're little beads of glass. That's the idea. And then you see me come in and start to do the dance with this majestical peacock. It takes me a little while to get his perspective right. I was trying to go around some of the areas that I wanted to keep from behind and I didn't necessarily want him central. 
So you see me going backwards and forwards, trying to work out where he should be in his composition. And then the hardest thing was working out how do I bring the back and the front together? Because even though I thought he was a spectacular peacock, not realism, my interpretation of a peacock, the, there was a disconnect between the back and the front for me. And you'll see me come and add lots of foil and glitter until I get the right combination to make the tail feather be part of the peacock, brighten up his tail feathers, but not devalue from the front, which is the peacock. I think I get the balance right in the end, considering that I was constantly chasing getting this piece to work. Overall, really, really love the end results. And I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think I've nailed it or failed it? And also, if I go back and recreate this, I've got so many learns that I would take into the next piece to make it more spectacular. And I'd probably add some multicolours to the peacock feathers as well. Anyway, I'm Sharon. I'm digressing. Remember, this is a collaboration with the Crafting Nook, so Miss Felicia and Lisa from Lisa Wyatt's Art. Please pop over and look at their video and watch it if you haven't already and show your support. Remember to give them a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you've not already. They have been amazing supporters of mine and they also have an amazing channel themselves. So it'd be really nice if you could go and show them some love. Love? Love. <laughs> not love. Love. <laughs> also, Lisa and Felicia, I hope that you're happy with this particular piece and I hope you think it fits the brief. And I hope everybody else has enjoyed seeing this beautiful, beautiful, in my opinion, sparkly peacock come to life. Anyway, I'm Sharon. I'm digressing for the very last time. I hope at the end when I get to take it out in the sun, you get to see some of the richness of the, of the colours and the sparkles. But, re oh, excuse me, remember to leave me a comment and let me know what you thought. Um, Lisa, Felicia, cannot wait to do another collaboration. Anyway... I'm going to put Sharon's Dodgy FM to see you out. And thank you so much for sticking with me and hanging out. Much love.
Surprise! I'm back, baby. Just showing you some of the embellishments. Now, I cut a lot of this out because I'm applying my Mixition Relief, which is a glue, into areas where I'm going to try to add a little bit of green foil here, a little bit of yellow glitter to help bring the body and the tail feather together. Um, I enjoyed doing this piece and I end up keeping this piece. I then go a bit rogue and I add like a splash of gold and a splash of blue and a splash of purple to the tail feathers. You also see me removing it the next day and only keeping the deep blue. I kept the deep blue because it added values to the tail feathers. The others distracted. So I removed it with just a plain baby wipe. What I then did was similar to what I did with the glue, apply a little bit of glue back to the tail feathers and then just applied a little bit of the dark blue glitter and a little bit of the light blue glitter and um, a little bit of, I, I'm going to say white glitter, it was like a snowflake, snowflake glitter, just to the white on the face a little bit, a little bit down the front to try uh, of the body to try and make it look like that's a higher point and a tiny little bit in the middle, so it's all very subtle ends up being glitter you see that shine in the very end video where the sun's on it and those colors everything about it you get to see and it comes to life and it's so majestical but you'll have to let me know whether you feel it's a nail it or fail it i apologize that i have fast forwarded it a lot but it would have been an exceptionally long video and i think that this is a more manageable chunk for you but if you do want more details on what i've done and if anything's been missed out or if you want me to see a peacock done in real time let me know i'll be happy to have a go at, do, at doing it on one of my lives but thank you for hanging out with me thank you for watching me explore and learn and fail and hopefully turning it around into something majestical i then put a final top coat over the top of it all just to bring it all together and i take you out in the sun this is where i feel like i'm like dusting for treasures uh it's the next day so painlessly you are removing all the excess glitter you want to get as much of that off your piece as possible so when you do add your final coat of resin it's not just floating in there and you get some control anyway i'm sharon i'm digressing for the last time lisa felicia cannot wait to go over and see your piece i hope you like this please everybody make sure you leave a comment let me know your thoughts and i will see you on the next video much love bye bye